So here we are again in Jeff's shed, Jeff's famous shed, and today we're looking at the field bike, the famous field bike ish, ish. and here it is. But before we get into all that, the details of the bike and whatever, uh, let's just go back about five years, I think, and remember how it came about. And as I recall, this bike didn't start like this. This bike was bought as a kind of temporary quick bike to race because the other bike you were building was having problems. So this bike arrived, having been run um, back in the day with a Kawasaki Z motor. Motor. Was it supercharged? GPZ motor. Yeah. Was it supercharged at the time? Supercharged. Uh, yeah, yeah, I think it was about a It had a Magnuson on it, yeah. Magnuson, yeah. So you got it, and did you use it? No. 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 So what was the first thing you changed on it? Was it the front end? The frame. Oh, the frame. The frame. So basically, the complete frame was ripped apart. Now, why did you do that? It wasn't it, a good enough frame, or...? You, the you, amount of work involved to put it... To adapt it to get it right. How you wanted it. Was it. Quick, how I wanted it. It was easier to start again. Start and. again. So the whole bike was taken apart. Yeah. Start again. Make a new frame, which you did. Which we started. Yeah. And did you put back the old engine into that frame? We started with the old engine. Did we? Yes. All we right, did. we did. But um, there are some pictures of it somewhere. I have got the shot. pictures. Yes, I got the pictures with this thing with about. 40 million G-clamps holding it all together. And then a person not too far away said, I know what, we'll go and buy well, all these nice bits for it. one-off bits. Well, that was because you were trying to make a gearbox, a two-speed drag race gearbox from a bunch of separate parts from a transit van and God knows what else. And I said, what are you effing about with that for? And eventually we found one, didn't we? A uh, used one, lightly used one. B&J. B&J, two-speed gearbox uh, in Birmingham, which belonged to a chap a bit like us, so I who... Th I think it was Phil Bainbridge's... Phil Bainbridge's one, old... One of his old gearboxes. Yeah, and like a lot of drag race parts, it seems to spend all its days being bought and sold and never actually get used. So now that two-speed two B&J is in it's the back of this... Sat in, here. sat in here. which hopefully will be fine. The one problem with that, though, is that it's now out of date, isn't it, the B&J two-speed? That one is out of date. So if it breaks... But I believe there are no parts... No spares for it, so... Don't break available, it. Available, so if it breaks, you know, <laughs> we've got a problem. There's a problem. <laughs> Start again. So, so then with the new gearbox, that meant a new what? That meant we started new side plates. End. Oh, uh, we, we started making a one-off bottom end. Well, you started making a one-off well, bottom end, and this beautiful it. bit of billet here, which is... I can remember buying the billet for it. I remember that it was quite expensive at the time, I think and you it's spent two hundred quid for yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, and you spent many happy hours. No. Machine that out. It's not quite finished yet. The barrel's finished. Yeah, yeah. Liners, pistons. Hopefully, we we're going to get it to I think 1500 cc. I think. We yeah, can yeah. Get but it right to. now, that's just sitting there. It's not on the bike. It's waiting for work to be done. Will it ever go on the bike? Because right now, it's got standard cases, hasn't it? It. It's a stand. It's a sawn off standard crankcases, but limited. Limited power, you, 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 capacity. You'll be pushing for four, five hundred horses, right. and you're gonna you're gonna start breaking them. So let's just back up a little bit. That is a standard old GPZ case the old, with the, the gearbox GP... area sawn off, Rem removed, and, and sealed. Off. And sealed. Yeah. With a splined output shaft on the. So we're shaft. gonna run it like that initially, just to see what happens. Get see, it, get get some an um, idea of yeah, and then hopefully. Hopefully you don't break it, but if you do break it, then sooner rather than later, we'll be putting that into it. Is that right? That's right. That's the plan. With a one-off crank that is sat on the jig. Oh yeah, it's been there. <laughs> That's got the splined output shaft is okay, in the so cases. There's your one-off crank there. What makes it a one-off crank then? It's uh, It's been built up of webs. There's no drive gear originally. Yeah. And the end web, which is getting pressed on, is going to have yeah, I can a see flange that. machine yeah. which fits on mm -hmm. to drive the lower the uh, pulley the I think it's uh, about a four inch diameter tooth pulley. Right, okay. So that that's uh, that's gotta be done. We're and right now the crank the that's in there is what? Complete crank that's been built. 
So what's in there now? It's a complete crank, built up. It's virtually all standard parts and rods. So you've retained the roller Apart bearing bottom ends? Apart from one of the end webs, which has been modified with a bigger bearing. Okay. And a, a, a billet flange machined up mm -hmm. to... Uh, and I see we've got two more cranks there, to be well lurking, to getting, going dusty. So what are they for? They're out the other comp bike. All right, we won't mention that one. We won't mention <laughs> which, that one. Which has been done. <laughs> yeah, yeah, all right, we won't mention that one. That's far too complicated. One's a, one's a spare. And one's, yeah, okay. Not enough yes. room to put everything. Yeah, yeah, so we'll ignore that for now, pretend you've not seen that one. Yeah, we're moving on now to the front end, which has also been changed, not once. We'll quote a phrase, it's like the brush that's had, yeah. had five new handles. Yeah, yeah. Before it's new not events. been changed once, has it? It's, it's been changed at least just, twice, I know of. There's nothing what we started with. So you started off with another set of billet yokes you started off with some different forks which you have on which your which bike. i've got on my bike You've yeah, yeah. Bike yes now. yes i i liberated them when these ones came along the... and then you made god knows why you then made oh and you made your own front wheel as i remember which is sat upstairs yeah now we'll break here because i've got a picture of that front wheel which is really really nice with matching discs so we'll break here and i'll show a photograph of that now No. Okay, yeah, yeah, we're back again. We can do that. So now this front end has got what is it, Yamaha? Front it's end? Uh, Suzuki Bandit. Suzuki with, Bandit. With one off PFM discs. And yeah, they're things. PFM. They're English, aren't, aren't they? I think they're. I think they are. In Northumbria somewhere, I think they are. They come and, as a good deal. Yeah, they come, and therefore you have to have them. And actually, they're quite cool, aren't they? <laughs> They're quite big Six on the endurance bucks, racing yeah. uh, scene, they're, I think. They're actually probably overkill for, for the bike. Yeah, yeah. But and the yokes, once again, some of your nice billet yokes. yokes. We've got lots, lots of machining out there. Um, and now here we are looking at the top end of the uh, forks. You've got some nice risers, pullback risers. What are these from? These are the master cylinders. Yeah. They're FJ. FJ, FJ but, but you've machined up some caps. I machined some fancy tops up for them, but yeah, whether... Yeah. And you machine these, grips... The grips are machine, but yeah. the... Yeah, that was a Chinese wall, special, wasn't it? it £11. £11 from, pound from China, unbelievable. You couldn't make it for that. We won't mention no. these horrible, horrible red handlebars. I hope they're not going to stay. But I guess you have them, so <laughs> it'll have to do. So now here we are looking at the middle of the bike, the engine. Um, and I guess for folks who don't know what a drag bike's like, what sort of a fuel bike is, We've got to go through all these belts and whistles and pulleys and God knows what else is on here. So let's start off then with the head. It's a Kawasaki head, I think. It's a Kawasaki Zephyr 1100. Zephyr. Now, why did you pick a Zephyr 1100? At the moment, the bottom end it's on, the stud pattern will not match. But when we do, the new block is drilled yeah. for Zephyr and it can be re-drilled, the cases can be re-drilled to suit. What might surprise it's, people it's is why twinkle. why you picked a Zephyr? It looks, it, it, compared to the originals, it looks a very strong head. Yeah, yeah, it's got more meat on it, hasn't it? And it, I think the bottom end is... more robust and it's yeah. twin plug. Twin plug, which we need. Yeah. Uh, we do have a spare somewhere, which mm -hmm. um, the, the original cylinders all, all want machining out and sculling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The combustion chambers to you know, to and the key thing about it, of course, it is strong. it's been reversed. It's been spun round. It's been spun round. Was that a difficult thing to do? Uh, not. It would be on a standard bike, standard barrel, uh, but with your machine in a one-off block, you can actually keep more metal on the side for the cam chain. Okay, so if we look at the inlet, which is now in the front rather than the back, we've got that one-off manifold. That inlet manifold. One off billet manifold. It seems we've machined out what three or four plates. A um, couple of adapter plates on the head. Uh, it's been milled and doweled. I think it's a two and inch those, block. Those four threaded holes at the top there. Here, uh, here, fuel here. injectors. There for the injectors. Yeah, for the nitro methane, hopefully. Hopefully, yeah. We've got blood a damn thing up. And then attached to that, we've got this bloody great big. An adapter plate that's Supercharger. to an S102 Sprintex. Yeah, and again, was that originally on the bike? Nope. <laughs> no, it wasn't. We had an Eaton on it and yeah. a Sprintex come along. And that was better, so you had to have that. And, and that meant remaking the manifold and remaking the drives. 
And if that doesn't work, I've got a Whipple supercharger. Oh, don't tell me about bloody Whipples. And then if we go back a wee bit, we can see the drive system. Now this confuses some people. We've got that pulley, the belt, which goes down to the crank, the end of the crank, and which is there. It's been fitted, the cr that end of the crank has been done. Mm -hmm. There is some work to do on the oil pump and fuel pump drive. Yeah, so the oil pump and fuel pump are where? The, that, the oil pump and fuel pump are running one. Yeah, the, I can recall now you spent there's the whole... There's a scavenge pump and the main oil pump. Yes, I remember you spent many, many happy hours on machining that. Yeah, yeah it's a very complicated piece of uh, machining there. Yeah, and then what also confuses the people, I guess, is next to that you've got even more belts. So let me just move the camera, and we'll talk about why we've got all those pulleys and belts at the back there. So here we are behind the engine, and we've got these two pulleys being driven by two. a separate um, belt, a tensioner. So what are these things that live behind? Two scintilla magnetos. Uh -huh. Which... And what do they live on normally? Where do they come from? They, they usually um, come off, uh, I believe they, they were fitted to... A tractor. Fire pump engines. A fire pump engine. <laughs> and in the, in the 30s or 40s... So how old are they? I mean, are they the, ancient or the, are they... They're actually mo more... Well, they modern are old, but they're more modern than... How modern's modern? Uh, probably 40 years old. Right, so that's modern for us, isn't it? It is quite well, it's quite modern, modern for you. That, yeah. yeah, yeah. And you've not got one of them, you've got two of them. Two of them. And that's because you've got, each one fires four plugs, and it's an eight plug head. Eight plug head. So you need two. It's, and the reason... It's safer to have two sparks with nitromethane. Yeah, so basically, each cylinder has a spark plug from both of those. Each... Yeah. Yeah, and the reason for that is because if it didn't spark, with if nitro, a, if, with nitro, it, it catastrophic. Yeah. Con rods. You get fuel lock. Pistons going. It's basically, you blow the engine up. It, you'll find all your engine components on the floor. <laughs> the floor, yeah. <laughs> Bang. And the reason for that is because with nitro, you throw in something like, is it three times as much fuel? Hopefully, it'll be about as you would with petrol. And so you're throwing so much fuel in there, so much liquid, that if it doesn't ignite, essentially it fills the cylinders and. It, yeah, bang. If it doesn't ignite, it's dangerous when the right amount <laughs> yeah. explodes. Yeah, hence why you've got to wear a bulletproof vest when you're riding a thing. And then if we go back a wee bit, still this nicely machined plate that holds everything together. You and your ball miller, keeping busy. And you've got this really nice looking thing here. So what's all this about? The gearbox. That's the gearbox. B &J That's the famous B&J. Okay. And the gearbox itself is where? Let me just that, move the camera in a wee bit. From the plate yep. there to where this little, that's the actual air valve that operates your clutch. Right. Your second gear. Right. Um, there is a spacer plate on it and let's just have a look down there. A support please. bracket there that's been milled out to support the sprocket and the shaft yep. that come out. And then, for, so that's a two-speeder. Was it originally for, was it built for something else or was it off of some the, yank tank? The, originally I believe, the components of them are Rolls-Royce. Rolls-Royce. Internals. The Which in turn I think are some sort of Chevy, American, I'm not sure, big V8. I'm not sure, um, So the gears are very big, very meaty. They're, they're very strong. And they can take, the you know, eight, nine hundred brake horsepower. But even, uh, even they will get to a point where they will break. expire. Well don't break it yet. I remember how much that cost. In um, the cylinder. This side is yeah. the clutch. Uh, there are going to be a couple of windows machined into the case so yeah. that you can get easy access to to it. Plus it'll get some air in. Yeah, so and breathe. in a way, uh, a fuel bike, the clutch acts as part of the gearbox, doesn't it? It's it slips on purpose. It's actually slipping right and acting to, as what, a torque 100 mile an hour or something like that? Right. 100 or so, it's still slipping? It's probably slipping up until the point you change into second gear. And what speed is that going to be? Possibly 150. Yeah, and the reason for that is because these things make so much power that even with a great big 12 inch slick on the back, it'll spin it up no problem. And that is trying it to control. Will spin it. It's trying to control the power transmission power to the Power transmission end. to the mm -hmm. to the track. And now I remember I was trying to make a clutch using Ford Mexico rally car sintered 
clutch plates, which I'm a bit being damn expensive, but we're not doing that, are we? We That's another clutch. change. We yes, bought we a bought clutch. a clutch. We bought a clutch. Some, rather than... clever, some clever ass spotted one yeah. for sale. Oh, we'll buy that. But just in case, if you want to ever finish off making that stupid chap... Ford Rally Escort, was it David? Oh, I don't know. Who we bought it from? I don't know. It's if lost. Dave, in... if, David, it's fo... if David's David watching, watching this, this, thank you for your clutch. His clutch is in there now somewhere. Right. right. <laughs> and now looking at the exhaust ports, we have the stainless steel headers. Headers, which are machined to slide on stubs which are bolted to the head. Yeah, now you made that didn't you, those collets? The clamps have been made, yeah, by yeah. myself. So uh, then they'll go back and exit behind the exhaust pipe, uh, behind the... The adapters tire. have been made to, to two inch to suit two inch stainless tubing which we have to get bent. Yeah. Or get some bends welded in and the four pipes will go to the rear and exit, the seat, exit the seat unit behind. Yeah, we won't mention the seat unit because it's down there, it's absolutely vile and hopefully okay. we'll get something a bit better than that. Okay, so now I'll move the camera and we'll come round the other side and we'll see what's on mm -hmm. the other side, okay? So now here we are on the other side of the bike, looking at the inlet side. Uh, so wh what's that from? The fuel of throttle body, I'll yes. rephrase is a Puma uh, that is actually made to fit the S102 Sprintex. With it the will, spacer, yeah, I see you got a spacer there. It's spaced out just to give it clearance from the frame and to right. get it into the airflow. Yeah, yeah. And I see you've got the oil filter down there. The oil filter has to be finished bolting on, so from... That's not quite there yet. It's not quite there, but once finishing, Okay, I've and then many other things. moving back a bit, I see something that reminds me of my Harley. It's a great big belt. It's an 85mm HDD belt. Yeah. It drives a 100 tooth pulley, which is, has a clutch fitted to it. Right. Uh, the front pulley, which is not on at the moment, yep. is there. That will bolt onto the end of the crank on a special adapter that fits on the spline. Um, where did um, that um, pulley come from? Is that a that's bit, I've, part? I've machined, yeah. I machined the pulley and had it sent off and had the teeth cut in it. Right, okay. Was that the place down in Southampton that we sent it to? Uh, I don't remember. Ooh. Back in the midst of time. Who knows? It's somewhere down south. Somewhere down south. Yeah. Okay, okay. Some, uh, I forget the name of the place now. Yeah, yeah. And now here we are at the back of the bike. Uh, that great big Mickey Thompson. Mickey Thompson. Tyre. So what size is that? It's 29, I think it's a 29 by 13. It says there 29.5 by 13. 29.5. And 13.5 by 13.5. Quite, quite a meaty thing. Mistake. Yeah, and the wheel it sits on is one of yours, special thing. It's a compromotive that was modified. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but we do have a new wheel to go in it. Based what a surprise. Beadlock. Yeah. Beadlock. Is that a beadlock? But That's a beadlock as well, isn't it? No, it's oh. not actually. Um, it's had two rings welded to it because the previous owner of the wheel mm -hmm. decided to drill the rim and put screws in there or something. Self-tapping screws <laughs> into the tire, so yeah. I have to have it. Well, the only way to neaten the rim up was to have two rings TIG welded on the end. Right. And some of the screws actually have got like a slight point on them, and they mm -hmm. just push through into the tire just to stop it from slipping yeah so it helps it it's, to slip um, so it, this it looks bin. actually better than what it, it really is it really is so where's the other tire then where's the other wheel the other wheel is sat in the loft right okay okay that will be fitted in which one's in that due course. is that the one with the three spokes on both sides or? it's the one the three spokes oh, that's a nice one that will like that's that. a nice that's one good. yeah yeah we'll get that out and have a look at that that's quite an impressive bit of kit and then obviously you've got the great big rear sprocket um, and the massive chain What's that? Is that? It's, that's an EK chain, 630 MS. 630 MS. Uh, yeah, it's a bit. Of on it at the minute, yeah, it's full of cobwebs. Um, we did have to dust this it down. It should last, but the. You say we might have to go to um, the other drag racer chain. Yeah, uh, yeah. And then you've got obviously the wheel adjusters here, great big, thick billet adjusters, big and adjusters. an end piece there for the wheelie bars. The top bracket's done. We've got to put a bottom bracket in for right. the wheelie bars, right. but okay. as we've not made them yet. Yeah. We... Actually, one thing that we've not talked about is the way you've changed the frame for that 15th time with that top tube. So let me just move the camera and we'll discuss that. Now I know that this frame was almost finished. It was almost finished. And then you changed your mind again about what you wanted to do with the top tube. 
because it had two or three top rails at first, didn't it? it we were going to use four top tubes. Yeah, ring power. Level. And the back of the frame was literally come too far back. Yeah. So a change of plan. And when you actually were lying on it, it was a bit uncomfortable. Yeah, it was in the way. So it was literally probably about another ten inches further back than yeah. the end. In which, fact, and it was a pretty sharp. Mm -hmm. And uh, you can, we can actually see here where you've modified the frame. Um, we, They're not finished yet. I've but actually, that, that's the T45, yeah. and the only way we could do it is by extending them and slugging them. Yeah, they slugged, they need a welding but yet, don't they? I, I might take them out originally where they were cut mm -hmm. and make them in. And redo that. Make two new pieces and re weld yeah. okay. on. But that top I, tube, I feel happy it's a great big that. three inch tube, isn't it? Three inch top tube that hopefully we can use as the air tank for. Yeah, I see there, we're the zooming there. We've got the threaded hole there that you've welded a piece on. And as you say, the volume of air inside there is sufficient that we can pump it up and use it as a mm, method to change probably it. Probably use it for the fuel shut off. Yeah. Use yeah. an air shut off. Yeah. Okay. On yeah. the fuel. So when did this start then? Let's go back again. When did this project start? When did you buy the original bike? Ten years ago. Ten years ago? And then eight years ago or so, I think I got on board and we sort of shared the prices thing and then we started changing it. We got a new wheel, new gearbox, new clutch, new head, which in turn meant a new bottom end. You fitted a new blower which meant new drives, change of frame, the second and third front end, which is okay because I ended up getting all, all, all the cool bits that came off it. And out of all that, eight, nine years worth of changing and changing and changing, we had this massive amount of oh, spares, spares, which, which, which now we've got a bit more there. space in this workshop, haven't you extended the workshop, we can now see the, what I call a spares bike, which spares sits bike. over there, which is actually coming along quite well, to be fair, it's a bit simpler than this, a lot simpler than this. And since Christmas, we're now in June, you're well more than halfway through that now, I would imagine. It's coming on. Yeah, it's coming quite well. We have got a video of that that I took last week. Um, so anybody wants to look at that, you're more than welcome. But the reason that exists is because this has been changed and changed and changed and changed. And even after all that, there's still plenty of spares in your loft and in the shed. There's still another you know, bikes there's worth. Another two bikes. Oh, oh God. Well, we're all getting older, so maybe when we're about 80, we might be able to have time to do something with it. So what's the plan next then? Where are we going to go next with this? The, the, the next stage, obviously, is um, because of the workshop change around, mm -hmm. which I've now got more or less everything where I want. Yeah. Uh, I can start getting these crankcases finished. Yeah. Um, we do have some new engine plates made to set the new bottom end. Yeah. I think that's quite important, isn't it? When you change one thing on a bike like this, like that bottom end, you've got to change everything else. You've got to change the engine plates, the side plates, props get new um, pulley lengths, new new belts. It just goes on and on and on, doesn't it? It's just like never ending. Something you can get around, but mainly yeah. we need new engine plates. Uh, and obviously the frame then can be finished. Yeah. Origi originally as well, the engine used to tilt backwards which didn't look quite... Which right. looked very old-fashioned. Yeah. Uh, so now we've tilted it vertical, which has allowed us to get the frame virtually far forward, which mm -hmm. for rider, come, yeah. it's more rider comfy. Friendly, yeah. yeah. Rider friendly. But right now, for this year, the focus is going to be on that one Getting over there. Getting that done. Yeah. If it's just done, and hopefully if it could be sold. Well, are we going to ride it? To the right person. We're going to ride it, yeah. It will uh, be for sale as... Once we've ridden it, once, once we've had a go of it, yeah. Uh, um, and then when this is finished, you can build my wonderful V-twin one-off. V-twin one-off. Natural bike, which I'll be 80 by the time we get that. But it's all... Well, what a way to go. What a way to go. Die on me, one-off <laughs> V-twin natural bike at Santa Pod. Yeah, that sounds good to me. Right, anything else we've got to talk about we haven't mentioned on this particular bike? Oh, oh yeah, yeah, I'll tell you what we should do. A little break here and we'll get that beautiful rear wheel out and I don't know we'll have a cup of tea first and I'll get a picture of that in fact no I won't because I've probably got a photograph of it already back in the back in the mist of time on? yeah I've got a photograph of it so we'll have a little pause here and I'll show you that photograph it's a beautiful little thing mm. and here it is
sort of brings us to the end of my little... Show the Whipple supercharger. <laughs> no, you can't see the Whipple supercharger. I'm sick of superchargers. You, you've got... <laughs> You've got drawers in this place full of bloody superchargers and SU carbs and God knows what else. No, no, we're staying with that Spintex. It's a good... Mm. No, I was looking at that the other day. I've got... What I was going to do... It, it's probably... I was, I was a bit concerned, you know, when I've worn these. Yeah. And you see, I didn't want it on um, on camera. Yes, OK. You know how they've gone a bit out of shape? Yes. Well, they're actually cut there. There's a slug there. I'd, I'd have to just zip that out, but I'm more tempted now... To use to that. ...to get them. Yeah profile them mm -hmm. and actually they just want a bit more of a bend on them and then a bend and do them in one from there okay and that, that viewers is why this bike takes such a long time because you have to get things right and that's fine i mean that's fine if it's not right it's not right and that's what i want to do that's what and that's what will happen sometimes trying to cut corners only takes you yeah longer and if you're not happy with it you're not happy with it and it needs no. fixing on, on that note then, we'll end our little um, journey over this fuel bike. Um, so when do you think it'll be running? Another year, two years? You can't... How long is a piece of string? <laughs> you dare not tell me. <laughs> All right. So, if you were stoned to wait around for a, a video of this thing running down Santa Pod. It's worrying when you're getting people now around your age dropping dead. Yeah, hey, don't, don't, don't say that, don't say that. <laughs> right. People not too much older than you going, oh, my back. Oh, that's oh. me, that, yeah, yeah. <laughs> On that happy note, we'll end it there. Cheers. <laughs>